To follow along with the written version of this pattern, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash corgi. <laughs> Hey there, it's Louie, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet a reversible corgi. Look at how cute the little corgi is, and look, he's so happy, 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 and then you flip him inside out, and <laughs> he's a grumpy corgi. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. I'm so excited to show you guys this pattern, and uh, yeah, I'm just really, I really love it. So this pattern is actually not originally designed by myself. It's designed by another Amy Groomy artist that goes by Sir Pearl Gray. You might recognize him. We've done a few collaborations with him in the past, including the giant bell bag pattern um, and the little Gulliver um, uh, Animal Crossing pattern. He's an amazing Amy Groomy artist, and for this collaboration, we're both making reversible plushies. So he made this reversible corgi, which you see here, and I made a reversible frog. We'll be talking more about these silly Amy Groomy uh, reversible plushies later on in the end of the video and where you can find more reversibles. But if you have any ideas for other reversible plushies that you'd like us to make, because we're going to probably do a few more, make sure to comment down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss it when we come out with new live streams. We're going to be doing a live crochet along later this month for this reversible corgi. Make sure to check out Sir Pearl Gray's other patterns. You can find links to that in the description below. Okay, well, let's talk about all the materials that you need for this pattern. For this pattern, I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% wool. Normally, I use 100% cotton from Amigurumi, but this one needs to have a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of stretch to it. So because of that, we're going to be using wool for this video. Um, I really like worsted weight wool for it. It just makes it the perfect size for me, and it's really nice and stretchy, which I really like. You'll need three different colors. You'll need your main color, that's going to be this orange here. Your secondary color, which we're going to be making in red. You'll need white for the body parts and legs and muzzle and stuff like that. And then I'm using worsted weight cotton yarn to add on any kind of detail. So the eyes here, we're going to be using black worsted weight yarn for the eyes and a little bit of pink for the mouth here. And we're going to use black for the mouth or mouth here and pink for the little tongue. Um, so that's all the different kinds of yarn you're going to need. Now I'm going to be using a size G, four millimeter crochet hook for my worsted weight yarn. I wouldn't suggest going much bigger than this uh, for worsted weight wool yarn because it will leave little holes. Uh, it'll just be a little bit stretched out and it just could make it a little bit not, not what you're really looking for. So I would stick to a size G or smaller if you want to um, you make your stitches even tighter. You can use an even smaller crochet hook. You'll need a darning needle. I like using this crimped end darning needle. It helps me sew in the ends uh, and all the little pieces to the face. And there is a decent amount of sewing to it. It's not too tough, but a crimped end darning needle really does help with that. Oops. You'll need a pair of scissors, of course, and then a small amount of stuffing. You just need a little bit of stuffing for the body. Um, don't use too much because it'll shine through, but we'll talk about more about that uh, a little bit later. But a little bit of stuffing for the body is nice as well. Okay, well, before we get rocking and rolling, let's talk about uh, how you can support this channel if you'd like to. If you'd like to help support this channel, um, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future patterns. They get access to the full digital um, library, including PDFs. Uh, so there's a downloadable PDF for this. They get other patterns like our reversible frog uh, and early access to patterns. And they get kits mailed to their door each month with all the materials they need to make whatever we're making that month. This month's kit was actually for a reversible corgi. So uh, pro members got a reversible corgi. If you are all the materials to make a reversible corgi, if you want to check out the live stream crochet along for this, we'll be doing one at the end of this uh, month. Make sure to like down below and subscribe to the channel. Hit the little bell icon so you don't miss it when we do that live stream. If you want to follow along this video and go to specific parts, I put time codes in the description below and they're, they should be split up in the little bar down here. And there's also a Spanish version of this PDF on the website and a, a lefty video version, which you can find a link to in the description as well. Okay, well, that's all the stuff. I know it's quite a lot, but let's get hooking. We're going to start by crocheting his little mouth muzzle here. And oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Look how cute. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's get hooking. Okay, so we're going to start with our white yarn here, and we're going to be making the mouth muzzle. You're going to want to make two of these mouth muzzles, and I'm going to be taking it pretty slow in the beginning here of this video so that anybody that's a complete beginner can get a little bit more help. Um, but if you want a more 
beginner focused series, check out my crocheting 101 series. I'll put links up here. We're going to start with a magic loop, which is a really simple way to get started with your amigurumi. What you want to do is pinch the yarn with your middle finger and thumb of your non-dominant hand, just like that. And then you're going to want to go over your index and middle finger like that, and then back over it and cross it like that to make an X on one side and then go back down on the back of your fingers and there should be two parallel lines on the back. Take this end and put it between your ring and pinky finger and hold it in to keep everything held together. Now take your crochet hook and take your fingers and put the back of them facing you so the two parallel bars are there. Go under the first bar, hook onto the second and pull that under the first one and then loop it under like so to make a little loop. See how it's making a loop there? Go over that first bar and loop onto the second. You might need your index finger to help guide the yarn onto the hook. And then take that second bar and pull it through the loop you made. And I like to really kind of scoop it in like that. It helps me get that loop in there. And that makes a little chain stitch. And now you can pull it off your fingers and it should stay together. If you like a more detailed video where I really show off how to do that in another different way to make a magic loop, check out the link right here or in the description down below for my magic loop video. Okay, so we're going to start with round one of this mouth muzzle and we're going to make all of our crochet into the center of this magic loop here. For round one, we're going to do six single crochets into the magic loop. So you want to take your crochet hook, go into the center of the loop here, and then yarn over with the end attached to the ball of yarn, like that, hook onto the hook and pull it under the loop, and then go over the loop, hook onto that yarn again, and pull it through the two loops on the hook, like that, and kind of scoop it in like that. That's gonna be a single crochet, and the majority of this video, uh, of this pattern is made with single crochet, so that, that stitch is gonna be used pretty much throughout this entire video. We're gonna do six of these into this magic loop. So there's our first one, Let's do another one, go into the loop, yarn over with this end, pull it under the loop, yarn over with the end going over the loop, and pull it through like that, and there we go. We have two single crochets, so we're going to make six of them. One, two, go nice and slow, there's three, here is our fourth. There is number five. One more will be six. Okay, so you now should have six stitches into the magic loop and uh, you can pull it nice and tight now. If you'd like to count back and make sure that you have your six stitches, which honestly is probably a good idea because we're gonna want to work into the first single crochet that we made for our round two. But if you wanna count back, I'm just pulling my crochet hook out so I can show you. You wanna look for these Vs at the top here. So you can see this V here. That's gonna be the last single crochet. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this one right here is gonna be your first single crochet. And that's gonna be the stitch that we're gonna work into for round two. Again, if you're not a complete beginner and you see me going really slow here and you're like, oh, that's not what I'm looking for, don't worry, we'll speed up in a little bit. This is just for the complete beginners out there. Okay, so we wanna find that first single crochet that we made, which is gonna be right there. And we're gonna work on to round two. For round two of this pattern, we're gonna be working in a spiral, so we don't need to turn around for pretty much this entire pattern. We don't need to do any turning around. We just wanna find our first single crochet that we had right here there and we want to do an increase into that uh, stitch so we want two single crochets into the exact same stitch that's called an increase it's meaning that you're putting an extra stitch into the into the same spot so we're going to do a single crochet get under both of those loops of that v yarn over pull it under both loops of that v like that yarn over again and pull through the two loops for a single crochet we're going to do two of those into the same spots so there's one we're gonna find where, see where that is going into right there? I wanna go into the same exact spot right here. Yarn over again and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two for a second single crochet into the same stitch. And that's gonna be our first increase. We're gonna do an increase into every stitch around, which is gonna be six increases total. Each increase is gonna add one additional stitch to our stitch count at the end of the round. So end of round one, we had six stitches, but at the end of round two here, we're gonna have 12 stitches because we're putting an extra stitch into every stitch around. So we got 
our first increase there, one, two. Now we're going to go into our next stitch. So this is the same stitch. This is the next stitch. Look for the two bars right there. Make sure your crochet hook goes under both of them. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over and pull through two. And that's going to be our first single crochet of our second increase. So we want one more single crochet into the same spot for our second increase. So into the same stitch, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. So there's our first increase, second increase, we want six of those total. Here's our third increase. Here's our first single crochet of that third increase. There's one, the same stitch, and two. Okay, let's go to our fourth one right here. Pull through, that's one. Go to the same one, and two. And that should be our eighth stitch total. We want to get to 12 stitches, so we have two more increases to go. So here's our next stitch. Let's do our, this is going to be our fifth increase. We have one single crochet into the same stitch. There is two. And here's our last increase right here. We're going to do two single crochets into that same one. For our last increase, there's one and two. There we go. Okay, so now you should have 12 stitches total, which is going to be six increases exactly. I'm going to pull this end to just close this end a little bit tighter. You can crochet around this during that last round if you want to like really make sure it's sewn in there, um, but we will be sewing this into the body, which will help it keep closed as well. Um, so you just don't cut this close because we're going to need it for sewing together way later on in the video. Okay. So that's going to be the end of round two. You should have 12 stitches around now. Again, if you want to count your stitches, just look at the V's all the way down and count each one. And then you can find your first stitch, which is going to be the next one right there. Okay, so now we are on to round three, which is actually going to be our last round of our mouth muzzle here. For round three, we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the next stitch. And we're gonna repeat that three times in a row, and then we're gonna do something else for the last half. So that's a single crochet into the first stitch. Should we find our next one right here? Boom. So just do a single crochet. So that's one single crochet into that stitch, and then an increase into the next stitch right here, which means two single crochets into the same stitch. So right here, we do our first single crochet for our increase, and go into the same one. You can see how it's like opened up there right there, pull through and pull through two, there's our increase. So we have one single crochet, one increase, we wanna repeat that three times in a row. So there's our first repeat, let's do our second one right here, single crochet, and then the next stitch and increase. And one and two, that's gonna be our second increase. Now let's do our third repeat here, single crochet one, and then increase one. So that's two in the same stitch. So one and two. Okay, so we have single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase. So three of those total. Now for the second half of this mouth muzzle, we're gonna basically be doing the exact opposite. We're gonna do an increase and then a single crochet and repeat that three times. This is gonna give the mouth muzzle kind of like more of a like a little bit more of a triangular shape, which will look really cute when we sew it onto the face. So for our second half of round three, we're doing an increase into the first stitch and then a single crochet repeated three times. So here's our next stitch right here, we'll do an increase. There's one and two into the same stitch and then a single crochet after that, like so. So increase, single crochet, repeated three times. Let's do our second repeat. Increase, one, two, and then single crochet. Boom. Now let's repeat it one more time. Increase, one, and two, and then a single crochet into this last one right there. That's going to be our last repeat. You should now have 18 stitches around. So if you want to count your Vs all the way around, there should be 18 total. And you can see it kind of, it like, that's the shape right there. And I know it might kind of look like a square, 
uh, I mean a circle, but it's not really. It's it's because of the way the increases are, it's giving it a, just the slightest amount of triangular shape, which I really like from Sir Pearl Gray's patterns. He does these really cool shaping with increases in a way that um, most amigurumi artists don't. So I think it's really cool. Um, yeah. Okay, now to finish up this muzzle, what we're gonna do is we just need to put a slip stitch into the first stitch of the, of the uh, into the next stitch right there. So just go into this next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through the loop on the hook, like so. And that's gonna make a slip stitch right there. We just need to cut the yarn. You want a long enough end for sewing it onto the face. So we're gonna go with like, that's probably good. So let's cut it close and then just pull all the way through like that. And now we can sew this mouth muzzle onto the face. Again, you want to make two of these total. All right, well, the next part we wanna do is make the pointed ears on uh, in, in our multiple colors. Okay, so let's get our main color for those ears. Okay, so for our ears, we want to make two in our main color and then two in our secondary color. So our main color is gonna be this orange and our secondary color is gonna be that more red color. So we wanna make two in this color and two using that secondary color. Now for the pointed ears, we're gonna start by doing a magic loop. Now because I showed you it in the beginning of this video, I'm not gonna go through how to do that exactly. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull it all the way through like so. Now round one of the pointed ears is going to be the exact same as our mouth muzzle. We're gonna start by doing six single crochets into the magic loop. So I'll just go ahead and do that really quick. Just six single crochets into this magic loop. And that's usually how we're gonna be starting our um, different parts of this pattern. Uh, it's got a lot of six single crochets into the magic loop, which is something that I do in my patterns as well. Uh, it's just a great, a great base for your amigurumi. Okay, so now we have six single crochets total. Again, you can count by counting those Vs, and we'll just pull it nice and tight, which will close it up. Okay. For round two, we're going to be doing a single crochet into the first stitch and then an increase into the next for uh, into all the stitches around. And that's gonna repeat three times total, which will bring us up from six stitches, which is what we have right now, to nine stitches, which is what we'll have at the end of this round. So we're gonna start by doing a single crochet into the first stitch right here. So it's the sixth one from the hook. So one, two, three, four, five, six. It's gonna be this one right here. And this is the hardest one to get into. You just kind of like wanna point it at the bottom there and just kind of get your crochet hook in there. And we'll do a single crochet into that first one. And we can work around this tail end if you'd like. So if you wanna hold this tail end, place it between the loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball right here, we can just finish the single crochet around this tail end to lock it into place. And we can do that just for a few stitches and that'll just keep it closed. That's what you can also do on the mouth muzzle if you'd like to, but it's not completely necessary for this pattern since we'll be using this tail end anyhow, um, but it is a nice technique to have. So again, that we did our first single crochet. There's our first one. Now into the next stitch right here, we wanna do our first increase. So we'll go into this next one, make sure you're under both loops and we're just going to do an increase. We're gonna do two single crochets into the same stitch. I'm still working around this tail end just for this first one. So there's our first single crochet into the same stitch. You can see where that V is pointing down right into there. Go ahead and pull through and pull through two. Okay, so that's gonna be our first repeat, a single crochet and then an increase. We wanna repeat that three times total. Pull that tail end out of the way. So let's do our second repeat single crochet into the next one right here, and then increase into the one right after it right there. So one and two. Let's do one more repeat, single crochet into the next stitch, increase into the stitch after. And this should bring you up from six stitches to nine stitches. So you should have nine stitches at the end of this round. You can see how it's just starting to kind of make the very tip of the point of the ear. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round two. For round three, we're gonna be basically continuing that repeat, but adding one single crochet between increases every time around. So that means that we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase repeated three times in a row all the way around. So let's do our first repeat, two single crochets, 
there's one, and the next stitch right here is two, and then an increase into the third stitch. So there's one single crochet and two into the same stitch. So that's one, two, increase. And we're gonna repeat that three times around. So let's do our second repeat. Two single crochets, one, and two. Okay, each of those single crochets got their own stitch and then an increase. So two single crochets into the same stitch for our second increase. There we go. Now let's do our last repeat, three repeats total. Two single crochets, one, two, and then our last increase right here, which should finish our stitch count up at 12 stitches around. So you should have went up from nine stitches to 12 stitches at the end of round three there. Okay, round four, you should really start to see the pattern here when we get to round four. For round four, we're doing three single crochets and then an increase repeated three times around. So you see how we're adding just another single crochet between increases to slowly grow our ear out and make kind of like a little bit of a pyramid. So that's three single crochets and then an increase repeated three times around. So let's do our first repeat, three single crochets, one, two, and three, and then an increase into the next right here. It's gonna be four and five. Okay, let's do that again. We want three of those repeats total. So let's do three single crochets, one, two, three, and then an increase. Four, and five. There we go. Now one more of those repeats, three single crochets, and then an increase. And this is gonna bring you up from 12 stitches, which is what your stitch count was at the end of round three, to um, 15 stitches, which is what the end of our stitch count is gonna be after this last increase right here. So you should have 15 stitches around at the end of round four, which is what we just finished up. So for round 15, we're gonna re be repeating that process one more time to increase even just one more time. So that means that we're gonna do four single crochets and then an increase repeated three times. Instead of doing three, we're adding another single crochet between increases. So we want four single crochets and then an increase and repeat that same thing three times in a row. So there's one, two, three, four, and then an increase, five and six. And we're gonna repeat that three times in a row. Let's do it again, four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then an increase, five and six. And then one more of those repeats, four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then our final increase right here will be five and six. And that should bring you up from 15 stitches to 18 stitches, which is what you should have at the end of this round. You should have now 18 stitches around. You see how we got a little point here. And we'll just be folding it when we sew it onto the body and we'll have a, like a nice flat little ear. Okay, so we got one more round here. For round six, our final round of our pointed ears, we want to do just a single crochet into every stitch around, which is just gonna be 18 single crochets total. So you just wanna go into each stitch around and just do one single crochet. And we're just gonna keep repeating that, just a single crochet 18 times. So we go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and then one more, um, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, and then one last one right here will be 18. And that will be the end of our last round, round six. That'll be the end of our pointed ears. Now to finish up the pointed ears, all you gotta do is slip stitch into the next stitch, just like we did on our mouth muzzle. Go into the next stitch here, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch. And then we can cut the yarn, leaving a somewhat long end to sew this onto the face, like that. And just pull it all the way through. We're just gonna sew this onto the face. Again, you want two ears made with our main color and then two ears made with your secondary color. So you want four ears total, two in each color. Okay, so now we have our mouth muzzles and our ears. The next thing we wanna make um, before, oh, next thing we wanna make is our feet. So we wanna crochet our little feet next. And for your feet, we're gonna be using our white yarn for that. Okay, so for our feet, we're going to be doing a magic loop method again to get it started. I'll just go ahead and do that. Like so, there we go. And we're going to make four of these feet total. And for round one of the feet, we're going to just do six single crochets into the magic loop, just like how we did on the ears and the mouth muzzle, just six single crochets in a row. Two, three, four, five, one more will be six, okay? You can pull this nice and tight now. That'll be the end of round one for the feet. For round two, we're gonna find our first stitch, which is gonna be right there, right here. Let's go ahead and just get into that stitch right away, just so we can get started. And for round two of our feet, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna do two increases in a row and then a single crochet. And we're gonna repeat that two times total. So just one repeat. So that's gonna be two increases and then a single crochet. So let's do our first increase, which is gonna be right in the stitch we're already in. So that's gonna be two single crochets into the same stitch. Before I finish this, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I'm working around this tail end just to keep it closed. Just gonna keep that right over it like that and crochet around it for our first stitch. It's gonna be one and then two is gonna be into the same stitch, two. So that's our first increase, two single crochets into the same spot. Now we want a second increase into the next stitch. There's one and two. So that's one increase, two increases. And then our third stitch is just gonna be a single crochet. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat that process one more time. That's gonna be two increases in a row and then a single crochet. So let's start with this one, an increase. So that's gonna be one and two. That's our first increase. And our second increase is gonna go right here. Three and four. And then our last single crochet is gonna be right here. There we go. So that's again, two increases in a row, then a single crochet, and then repeat it again. Two increases and then a single crochet. And that should bring you up to 10 stitches around. So you should now have 10 stitches into our little tiny feet here. Okay, so for round three of our feet, we're just going to do a single crochet in every stitch around. So that's just going to be 10 single crochets, one in each stitch. So there's one, two, a nice easy round three of just doing single crochets all the way around. So it's going to be our fourth. Here's our fifth stitch. Let's do five more, six, and our seventh eight, nine, this is gonna be our 10th one right there. There we go. So we got, see how we're making just a little tiny, little tiny foot. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round three. For round four of our feet, we're going to be doing three single crochets and then a new stitch, the invisible decrease. And we're gonna repeat that two times total. So let's just take it one stitch at a time. We're gonna start round four by doing three single crochets. So there's one single crochet, two, and three, three single crochets in a row, and then an invisible decrease. For an invisible decrease, we're gonna take your crochet hook and you're gonna go under the front loop only of the next stitch, and then pull your, uh, or like flip your crochet hook around like this, 
to get positioned under the next front loop, we're gonna go under that other front loop too. So we're just gonna go under two front loops in a row. Okay, the front loop only. Now let me take this out and make sure that you understand that we're not going under both loops. So this would be under both loops. We only wanna go under this front loop of both this stitch and the next stitch. There's one front loop and two front loops. That little flip around like that really helps you get into position for the second front loop. Once you're under both of those front loops, you wanna yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull under those front loops, yarn over again, and pull through both loops on the hook. So essentially you're doing a single crochet into the front loops of the next two stitches. And that's gonna decrease us down. So that's going to make it so we do the opposite of an increase. We're not adding a stitch, we're decreasing. We're, we're removing a stitch from our round. And we wanna repeat that process one more time, so two times total. And that process again was three single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So let's do a second one. Three single crochets. It's gonna be one, two, and three, and then our invisible decrease. So that's gonna be front loop, front loop, yarn over and do a single crochet. Pull through, and, and really you wanna scoop under those two front loops, it makes it a lot easier. And yarn over and pull through two for our single crochet. There you go, we got a little tiny foot. We can finish up the foot by doing a slip stitch into the next stitch right here, the very next one. Pull through and pull through the loop on the hook for a slip stitch. Cut the yarn. You do not need a very long end for the t for the feet either. Just about that long is totally fine. Very short. Um, and that's just going to be for sewing it on. And then you can just take this end and pull it all the way through to make a slip stitch. And now we have a little itty tiny bitty foot. See how it's going to be sewn onto the body. You want to make four of these feet total. So again, that's two mouth muzzles, four ears in two different colors, and then four of these feet all in the same color, all in white. Okay, and that's going to be the end of our feet. The next part we want to make is the tail, and we only need to make one of our tails. Uh, and actually, I really like making the tail. Um, we're going to be learning how to do it in different colors instead of doing it all in the same color. So let's start by using our white yarn, just like how we started with our foot here. Okay, so for our foot, we're gonna start with a magic loop using our white yarn again. And the foot is gonna be a little bit different than the rest of them. Instead of doing six single crochets into the magic loop, we're actually gonna do five. So only five single crochets into this magic loop. We're also gonna be doing some weird color changes into this so that we can make the tail in two different colors, um, but we don't need to do that. Again, I'll explain that when we get to round four, uh, which is gonna be in a little bit. So for round one, in all of our white yarn here, we wanna do just five single crochets into the magic loop, not six, five. So go into the magic loop and we'll do five single crochets. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. So only five single crochets around. Pull this magic loop to pull it nice and tight. And that'll be the end of round one. Round one, nice and easy. For round two, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase and then two single crochets. And that's gonna bring you up from five stitches to six stitches. This is gonna be a little bit small, a little hard to get to. So let's just take it one stitch at a time. We're gonna start with our first one right here. There's your first stitch. We're gonna do a single crochet into the first one and into the second one. So two single crochets. So there's gonna be our first stitch. Actually, let's work around our tail end to make sure it's locked in. First stitch, here's our second stitch. There we go, we can let that tail end go now. So that's two single crochets and then an increase into the next stitch. So here's our third stitch and we wanna do an increase. So that's two single crochets into the same spot. So there's one and two. And then to finish up this round, we want two more single crochets. So single crochet into the next two stitches. So there's one and that's gonna be two. That's gonna be the end of round two. You should now have six stitches around. So if you count those little bees around the top, should be six of them. Okay, 
For round three, we're gonna do five single crochets and then we're gonna do an increase right at the end of our round. So right into this last stitch right here. So that's five single crochets. So let's start in the first one right here. We want one. Here's our second stitch. Two. There's our third stitch. There's our fourth one, all single crochets. And then our fifth stitch will be right there. And to this very last stitch, we wanna do an increase, but we are going to be changing colors after this increase. So let me show you how to do that. First off, we're gonna be doing an increase, which means we're gonna do two single crochets into the same stitch. So let's start by doing our first single crochet into that stitch. That's gonna be our first single crochet. And now we're gonna start our second single crochet like that, but we don't wanna pull through because we're gonna change colors now um, to our main color. Now we're going to need to use two different kinds of colors here. Um, you have the option, let me show you the finished project. What we're making here is the tail and we're gonna do color changes in the tail so that it's different on the bottom than it is on the top. You don't really need to do this. You can make it all the same color, but you will have a little discrepancy when you wanna flip your guy inside out and it's our main color instead of our secondary color on the bottom. So I'm gonna show you how to do the two different colors, but if you wanna just make it one color, then just change to your main color here and continue on in just one color, okay? But I'll be showing you how to make it two different colors. Okay, so we wanna start by grabbing our main color and we have our single crochet halfway done for our last single crochet in round three, which is gonna be an increase, or our second single crochet for our increase right there. You wanna take our main color here, place it in between the loops on the hook and the loop attached to the yarn right here. And we're gonna hold it down with our index finger of our dominant hand. With our non-dominant index finger, we're gonna hold it in between the two colors just flip it under like that so that the white one goes around it. See how it's going around it right there? And then yarn over with the new color like so and just pull it through the two loops on the hook like that. That'll change us over to our orange color. We'll pull it nice and tight there and we can get started on to our next round which is going to be round four. For round four we're going to do six single crochets and then an increase. So that's gonna bring you up from seven stitches, which is our stitch count at round three, to eight stitches, which is our stitch count at round four. Now, the important thing to know for round four, if you're going to do two different colors, is you only wanna do four of those stitches in our main color, and then four of our stitches in our secondary color. So let's just get started. We're gonna start by doing um, our, uh, again, that the pattern here for our Four, round four is going to be six single crochets and then an increase. So let's do our first four single crochets of our six in our main color. So we're just gonna do four single crochets in our main color. I'm just gonna work around this tail end for our first stitch right there. There's one, and then we could just cut the yarn. You can actually cut it really short here. We don't need this end at all. So there's our first single crochet, and here's our next one. So there's two, here's our third single crochet, one, two, three, here is our fourth single crochet, and remember I only want four in our main color, and then we can grab our secondary color, and we're going to change to our secondary color. We don't need to cut our main color after this, by the way. So we'll take our main color, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hold our new color down with our index finger of our dominant hand, and then our non-dominant index finger is going to be pointing upwards between the two new colors and just flip it under like so, yarn over with the new color, and pull it through the two loops on the hook to change to our new color. Now we don't need to cut this uh, old color. Instead, we're just going to crochet around it and then switch colors when we get to the end of the round. So we want to do our last four stitches in our main or in our uh, in our new color. Uh, color B is what we should call it. And our last stitch here is going to be an increase. So that means we're going to do two single crochets in our main or in our secondary color, color B. And then our last stitch right here is going to be an increase in our color B. And then we're going to change back to our main color. We could just crochet around this end as we go. So let's go ahead and do that. We want two single crochets. Here's our next stitch right there. If you want to look for that B. 
we do it in our main color and we're working around our secondary color. See how it's in between, let me just make a little room there. See how it's in between the loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball and we've got our main color in between that. That's exactly what we want. We just wanna work around it. So that's it's exactly where we want it to be when we get to our um, the end of this round. So there's our first single crochet, our color B. There's our second crochet in color B. And then our last stitch right here in color B is gonna be an increase. So we want one single crochet and then a second one into the same exact stitch right here using our color B. Okay, now before you finish and pull through with our color, uh, pull through to finish the last increase, we wanna switch back to our main color so we can just hold it in between, flip it under, yarn over with our main color and pull it through the two loops to finish up that last increase and finish up our round four. Okay, so for our last round, round five, we just wanna do a single crochet into each stitch around, but we only want four in our main color and then uh, four in our secondary color. So, and we could just crochet around our main color as we go here. We just want all single crochets. And again, I'm working into the V and I'm working around our new color, our second color. We're just gonna do single crochets all around. So there's one stitch. Here's our second one under both loops and around our main or second color. There's two. Here's our next one under both loops. See that under both loops. You know what, hold on just a quick second. Let me pull this out really quick. I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff in, cut this little end here a little closer so it stops getting in the way and lets you really see our stitches a little bit more. And I'm just gonna take a little stick here. We're just gonna go ahead and stuff those ends into the tail so that they're just a little hidden so you can see our stitches a little bit better. Okay. So again, we did two single crochets, one, two in our main color. Here's our third. And our fourth right there, like that. And now we wanna change back to our main color because we did four and we're halfway through that last one right there. We'll change back to our second color, yarn over and pull through with our second color. We can just actually leave our main color here. So we can actually just hold it off to the side and pretend it's not there at all. We'll cut it in just a second. We just need to do four single crochets all in our main color into these last stitches. So we've got one, two, three, and four. That's gonna be the end of round five in our last round here um, for our for our tail. And you can see how we got all colors on one side and then turn it, it's a different color. You can see the little color change on the sides. Okay, so to finish up the tail, we just wanna go into our next stitch right here and do a slip stitch using our secondary color like that. You just pull it through the loop, through the stitch and then through the loop on the hook. Now we can cut both of these ends um, uh, we don't need them too long, but we do need both of these ends like that. We'll just pull this end all the way through. And now when we sew this onto the body, what we basically do is we we just sew this one into the body just so it holds its place. And then we're gonna sew on, I mean, we're gonna talk about this again later, but we're gonna sew this onto the body using this orange, or I mean the, the main color to sew on our main stitches and our second color to sew on our secondary stitches. That's yeah. Okay, so we've got our little itty, tiniest bitty tail. The next thing that we wanna do before we can finally start working on our body is we wanna make our tongue, which is a um, an optional addition, but uh, is a very, very cute addition. It's very simple, and we're going to need our pink yarn for this. Okay, so you just want your pink yarn here and you don't need very much. Again, I'm using 100% cotton for this because I want it to be a slightly different texture than our wool so that it looks different when you sew it onto the face. And I also really just like this pink yarn. So we have, see how it's like just a slightly different texture than the face. It just adds a little bit of something, something to it. So what you need is your pink yarn here and the, the tongue's gonna be made slightly different. All you wanna do is you wanna make a slip knot so we're going to go ahead and take this end, fold it over itself to make a loop there, and then fold that loop over 
this bar and then fold the uh, pull the bar in from the inside here, pinch the tail end here, pull it through like that. That's going to make something we call a slip knot, which is so that when you pull this tail end, it doesn't close the loop. But when you pull this tail end, it does close the loop. Take your crochet hook and pull it, put it in the loop and pull it slightly tight to get it around the crochet hook. Now we've got a little slip knot there. Okay, so for our tongue, it's really simple. All we're going to do is chain three. So we're going to yarn over, pull it through the loop on the hook there. We've got one, two, three. And uh, to finish up the tongue, it's really easy. All you need to do is do a half double crochet into the back loop of the first chain that you made. So that means that we yarn over and we want to find the first stitch we made. So our first chain we made. So we count back one, two, three, that one right there. And see that little bar on the back here? See that little bit right here? Get your nail, pry it, your crochet hook into that back loop like that. Try to make sure you're under all those little ends. And then yarn over, pull through the, the stitch like that. Now you should have three loops on the hook. You want to yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook like that. That's going to make a half double crochet. And it's actually the only half double crochet that we need for this entire pattern, just to make the tongue. Now we want to yarn over and pull through uh, chain one, like so, and then cut the yarn. You do not need a very long end at all. That's all you need. And then just pull it all the way through like that. Pull it nice and tight. And we're going to sew this little tiny thing onto the mouth when we finish uh, making the face of the body, which is it's going to be after we make the body. OK, so that's going to be all the pieces that you need for the body. Um, again, to reiterate, uh, just so you make sure you have all your pieces before you start working on the body, because once you start working on the body, your yarn is going to be used and it's kind of hard to continue making pieces for the body. That's, again, going to be um, four ears, two in our main color and two in our secondary color. You'll need four legs all in our white color and you'll need two muzzles. Um, that's going to be in our uh, all both in white. You'll need a tail and then you're going to need that little tongue that we just made. OK, well, without further ado, let's finally get working onto the body, uh, which is going to be a significant chunk of this video. So let's get rocking and rolling. OK, so next up, we're going to be finally getting to work on our body of our um, our reversible plushie. And we're going to start with another magic loop. So I'll just go ahead and get rock and rolling. And we're going to start with our main color here. We're going to be end up we're going to end up doing a, a decent amount of color changes throughout this body. Actually, only two color changes. We're going to change to white and then we're going to change back to the main color. But that's not going to be for a few rounds. So we're just going to take it uh, one round at a time. Um, and I would suggest getting maybe a stitch marker for this part because there's a lot of rounds here and it's good to keep track of your where you're at. Um, you know, stitch markers are good for the rest of the parts as well, but since they're so small, it's not as, um, you know, important because it's really quick to make those other body parts. Okay, well, let's get rocking and rolling. We're going to start with round one, and round one is going to be the exact same as the ears and um, the nose and stuff. All we're going to do is six single crochets into the magic loop. So we're just going to do six single crochets right into the center here, the same as the rest of our um, parts here. So nice and easy one, one, two, three, four, five, and six, nice and easy. We're just gonna go ahead and pull it tight there. And let's grab our stitch marker here. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the stitch marker just like, actually just like this. Oh well, yeah, no, we'll do it like this. We're gonna go like this, and we're going to hold it down in between right here. And we're just going to crochet around this uh, other strand of yarn for a stitch. Uh, and then we're going to continually crochet around it after the end of each round. That's a, for the first stitch, we're going to crochet around this stitch marker. And that'll keep us um, knowing where the end of the round is. OK, so for round two of our body, we're going to do an increase into each stitch around. So we're going to find our first stitch right here. Go ahead and get our crochet hook into 
there. There we go. And we're going to work around this tail end for our first few stitches. And we're just going to do an increase. So two single crochets into that same stitch and repeating that all the way around. And that's going to bring us up from six stitches around to 12 stitches. So you'll have 12 stitches by the end of this round. So there's our first increase, just two into the same stitch. And uh, after doing the first two, I can actually just pull this tail end to the side. We'll cut it at the end of this round. Um, we don't need to cut it too short, actually. Um, yeah, because uh, we're going to make it come. Well, I'll, I'll explain that later. All right, so we want increases in each stitch round. Here's our second increase into our second stitch. And there's one single crochet and two. Keep going around. Here's going to be our third increase. So our, four, our fifth stitch and our sixth stitch. And three more increases. Here's our fourth increase. One, two, our fifth one, three and four. And then our last one right here, it's going to be our 11th and our 12th single crochet all the way in the round. I'm going to pull this tail in just a little bit to close that end up a little. We're going to take this color, uh, our stitch marker here. We're going to pull it up. Um, this is way longer than I need. I actually only need probably like half of this. So we'll go ahead and cut that a little shorter. And I like to pull it up so that the tail end on the back is just barely there. So that's easy for us to pull out when we're done with the stitch marker. Okay, we're just going to place that over, and we're just going to keep working around and ignoring this end there. Um, we'll keep this tail end just for a little while because we're going to end up pulling it through the middle to create a little tuft of hair at the top of the head. Okay, so we're done with round two. Now we're on to round three. Round three is pretty simple for amigurumi. What we're going to do is we're going to do a single crochet into our very first stitch, and then an increase into the second stitch, and then we're going to repeat that process six times around. So let's do our first one right here. Make sure we're under both loops, just like that. There is one single crochet, and then into the next stitch, it'll be an increase. So there's one, and then this is gonna be three, and four are in the same stitch. Okay, we're gonna repeat that process six times around. So let's do our second repeat. There's a single crochet in the first one, and then into the next one is an increase. One and two. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. This should bring us up to eighteen stitches total. Thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen, sixteen. And then our last increase, 17 and 18. There we go. That'll be the end of round three. For round four, we're going to increase up yet again. Um, we're going to do an additional single crochet between increases. So that means that we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase repeated six times around, bringing us up from 18 to 24 stitches. So that's going to be two single crochets, one, two, and then an increase, three and four. We're gonna repeat that around six times. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. It's like we're dancing, except with yarn and a crochet hook. <laughs> One, two, three, and four. All right, one more. One, two, and this last one right here. It's going to be three and four. And now we should be up at 24 stitches around. You can count those little Vs at the top to make sure that you're at the right place. You can pull our stitch marker up like this. There we go. And we'll continue on to round five. Okay, so for round five, we're going to do an additional single crochet between increases. That means we're gonna do three single crochets 
and then an increase. And we're going to repeat that process all the way around six times total. So let's do our round five here. That's three single crochets. One, two, three. And then an increase. Four and five. And that's, uh, we're going to do that all the way around, keep repeating that process, and that's going to bring us up from 24 to 30 stitches around. So let's do our second repeat. So that was one, two, three, four, and five, and then six, seven, eight, and then nine and ten will be in the same stitch because they're an, it's an increase. Nine and ten. 11, 12, 13, and then 14 and 15. 16, 17, 18, and then 19 and 20. 19 and 20. Keep going. 21, 22, 23, and then 24 and 25 will be our increase. 24. And 25. And then one more repeat of that. 26, 27, 28, and then 29 and 30 will be in the same stitch. 29 and 30. There we go. All right. That's going to be the end of round five. Let's pull our stitch marker up. And now we're on to round six. Round six is going to be our. Uh, our next round is going to be increasing up one more time. So we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase. So it's one more repeat in doing an additional single crochet between increases and repeating that around six times. So let's do that. We're going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then five and six will be in the same stitch. Five and six. Okay, and then we're going to repeat that process six times around. So let's do our second repeat. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's four single crochets. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And then 11 and 12 will be our increase. 11 and 12. And if you've been keeping track, this will bring us up another six stitches. So our last round, we were at 30 stitches around. And at the end of this round, we should be up to 36 stitches around. I just did my, I think that's my third repeat. Yeah. Let's do our fourth repeat. One, two, three, and four. And then our five and six will be right here. Five and six. All right. One or two more repeats of that. One, two, three four, and then five and six. One more of those repeats to get us up to 36 stitches around, which is where we'll be at for an, three rounds in a row after this. One, two, three, four, and then five and six. All right. That's going to be the end of round six. For round seven, eight, and nine, that's three rounds total, seven, eight, nine, we're going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. There should still be six uh, or 36 stitches around. So three rounds of just single crochets, uh, 36 stitches per round. And yeah, it'll be nice and easy here for three rounds in a row. And this is going to bring our head up a little bit. So we're going out and then we're going to go straight down because of those rounds of single crochets. And then we'll bring it out just a little bit more and go from there. So it's just going to be three rounds of just single crochets. I'll go ahead and do those three rounds and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round nine. I did three rounds of single crochets there and I've been keeping my track with my stitch marker, which if you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I'm not great at keeping track of my stitch marker. So I'm really glad that I am this time. Hopefully I can keep it up the whole video. Okay, so we did three rounds of just single crochets, uh, 36 stitches per round. Now we're on to round 10, where we're going to be increasing up one more time. We're going to do five single crochets and then an increase and repeating that process six times around, which is going to bring us up from 36 stitches around to 42 stitches around. So that's going to be five single crochets. Oops. Good. There we go. One, two, three, 
four and five, and then an increase into the next stitch right here. So that's six and seven. And we're gonna repeat that uh, six times all the way around. So let's do that again. Five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and then an increase, six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, get a little bit more yarn, and then six and seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, two more repeats. One, two, three, four, five, and then right here is going to be our six and seven. One more time. And again, this should bring you up to 42 stitches around at the end of this round. Five, right? One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. All right, we'll pull our stitch marker up here. Get a little bit more yarn here. And now we are on to round 11 and 12. So two more rounds of just single crochets into each stitch round. So that's gonna be 42 stitches per round, just two rounds of single crochets all the way around in our main color. And then after that, we're going to be switching up and doing uh, changing to our white yarn for a few rounds to make like the, the seam between uh, color changes. So that's just gonna be two rounds of just single crochets all the way around. 42 stitches per round. Okay, so we're at the end of our round 12, our two rounds of just uh, single crochets in our main color here. And I'm stopping just before the end of the round uh, because we want to change colors now. So you just wanna get your white yarn here, place it in between, hold it down with your index finger of your dominant hand like that. Take your index finger of your non-dominant hand and place it in between the two strands of yarn and then flip it under. Oops. Take your crochet hook, go over the other color and yarn over with the new one and just pull that through the two ends. Pull that tail end just a little bit. And now we've changed color. There we go. Okay, so we can pull our stitch marker up right here. And we are on to round 13. So for round 13, 14, and 15, that's three rounds in a row, 13, 14, 15, we're just gonna be continually doing our single crochets into each stitch round. So that's going to be three rounds of single crochets. I'm gonna go around our, our main color here just for our first stitch, just to hold it into place like that. And then we can cut it loose. You don't need too long of an end. So you can just cut it nice and short like that because it's just going to go on the inside anyhow. And we're just going to have three rounds of single crochets all in our white yarn here. And we're going to change to white from here on. And I think that's actually the end of using your, um, your color A, by the way. So if you have used all your color A, that's great. That's, that's all you need to use it for. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna do three rounds of our single crochets in our white yarn, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and this is gonna be the end of round 15. Now before I continue, I'm just gonna pull our stitch markers out and move them down because this little color change really marks our, our change right there really easily. So let's go ahead and start pulling these out. I'm running out of a color or actually I guess I'm not really but it's just easier to do it now so let's go ahead and grab our needle and I like to just pull it out one stitch at a time like this so that it doesn't stretch your stitches out too much there we go we want to make sure that it goes on the inside so down here right there and then down here we're just going to pull it out from the inside instead so that the tail end is stay is staying on the inside as we keep our stitch marker going. All right. 
Okay, so that was the end of round 15, round 13 through 15, I should say, our rounds of single crochet. Pull our stitch marker up here. Now we're on to round 16. For round 16, we're going to do five single crochets, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease. And I think we, yeah, we did invisible decreases when we got to the feet, but I'll show you how to do them again uh, here. So we're going to do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to decrease down. So we want to take your crochet hook, go into the front loops only of the next two stitches. I like to do one at a time. So there's one front loop. And I like to flip my crochet hook around to get in position for the second front loop. And then we're going to do a single crochet into those front loops. So yarn over, pull through both, yarn over and pull through. That's going to be an invisible decrease. Okay, so we're going to do, we're going to repeat that process six times around going all the way around. And this is going to bring you down from 42 stitches back down to 36 stitches. So that's five single crochets and an invisible decrease. Repeat it all the way around. So five, one, two, three, four, and five, and then our invisible decrease. So front loop, front loop, and then single crochet into those front loops. And yeah, just six repeats of this. Two, three, four, five, and an invisible decrease. And if you're watching this part of the video, I'm always curious of who watches, um, who actually watches these in between parts between rounds. So if you are watching this video, this part of the video, um, comment down below. Let's do a secret code so that no one knows what I'm talking about. So let's say um, if you comment down below with uh, a pineapple, uh, the, either the word or the emoji for a pineapple, I'll know that you watched this part of the of the video and it'll be a fun little secret code between us. Um, yeah, I just think that'd be kind of funny. Let's see how many people actually comment pineapple. One, two, three, four, five, and then our invisible decrease. Because I assume that probably a lot of people skip these parts in between rounds and that's okay. One, two, three, four, and five, and then our invisible decrease. And that's going to be the end of round 16. You should have 36 stitches around now. See our little, see our little guy coming together? Okay. I'm going to pull our stitch marker up here. And we are on to round uh, 17. For round 17, pretty easy round. We're just going to be doing a single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So that's just going to be 36 stitches total. Just a single crochet into every stitch around. Nice and easy, a little break. And hey, if you really like these videos and you'd like to help support these channel, this channel, um, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. I talked about it a little bit in the beginning of this video, but Club Crochet memberships um, not only help support this channel, but you get a lot back in return. You get full access to the digital um, content on the website, so that includes hundreds of patterns that I've created or that other collaborators that we've worked with have created. Um, every single pattern has a full video tutorial. There, uh, You get discounts in the shop on any kinds of purchases of kits. And you can even get a pro membership, which gets you uh, monthly kits mailed to your door each month with all the materials that you need to make whatever we're making that month. So this month was our, uh, our little reversible corgi here. And uh, yeah, I, I love the pro memberships. I think it's so fun. So if you are a member out there, thank you so much for your support. Okay, two more stitches here, one and two, and that's gonna be the end of round 17. I'm gonna pull our stitch marker up here. And that's actually kind of the, the middle point right there. That was like the middle point between rounds because now on round 18, we're going to uh, be increasing back up. So where we decreased the round before this, in this round, we're actually gonna increase back up to um, from 36 to 42 stitches. So to do that, we're going to single crochet five times and then increase once and repeat that process six times around. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then an increase, six and seven. 
And we're going to repeat that process six times. So let's do our second repeat. One, two, three, four, five, and then an increase. Six and seven. So you can see how we're, we're decreased down and then we increase up. And this creates a nice little border between um, the colors so that when you flip it inside out, it really uh, keeps the shape very, very well. One, two, three, four, five, and then our increase, six and seven. And we should be back up to our 42 stitches after this round. So one, two, three, four, five, and then our increase, six, seven. One more. One, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven to finish up round 18. Okay. See how it goes like in right there, just barely, and then out? That's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we are on to round 19. Uh, and we're actually going to be doing round 19 and 20 now. So two rounds in a row, just single crochets around. Um, so we're just going to do two rounds of just single crochet in our white. Uh, and there should still be 42 stitches around for each round. And uh, that's going... And then after that round, we're going to change colors and do more single crochets around. So we want two rounds of just single crochets in your white color. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do those two rounds of just single crochets, and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so we are at the end of our two rounds of single crochet round. Uh, this will be the end of round 20 here. I'm gonna stop halfway through this stitch because we wanna change back. Uh, we wanna change colors now to our secondary color, which is gonna be this kind of reddish, uh, reddish orange. And so we're just going to change colors now after our single crochets over to our red color there. Pull our stitch marker up. I'm just going to crochet around this white yarn just for uh, our first single crochet of our next round. But our next round is going to be round 21. And we're actually going to do rounds 21, 22, and 23. So three rounds of just single crochets all the way around, all in our new uh, color B. So we're just going to crochet around our white yarn here for our first stitch. We can go ahead and cut it pretty close. And just keep crocheting around in your new color. But um, before I keep doing that, so let me just do a few stitches here. Before I keep going, uh, one thing that I do want to do uh, here is I want to get a little bit of yarn, our orange yarn here, through the tuft of, or through the top of the head here to create a little tuft of hair at the top. Now, this is completely optional. You do not have to do this at all. I think it's just cute. Um, I like to go for a very silly, uh, a very silly version in the cut, uh, in the in our main color and then a grumpy version with our secondary color. And I think it's fun to have the silly one have just a little bit of yarn sticking out at the top as if he's got just a little tuft of hair. So we're just gonna go ahead and cut it nice and close. And I like to just push it down at the top like that. And there you go. See, isn't that cute? Oh my gosh, that's gonna be really cute. And we're gonna have the ears and the eyes and the nose and stuff like that. So uh, that's just it. I just wanted to do that before it was too late, uh, just because it's a lot more difficult when we get into this color and as we get further and further along in our piece. Okay. All right, so we're gonna just continue our rounds now. We are on round 21 and we need to do three rounds, 21 through 23, uh, all with single crochets around. And there still should be only 42 stitches around. So if you want to keep track of your stitches, uh, you should have 42 after every round. Uh, and we want three rounds in this new color B here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and do those three rounds, and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round uh, 23. Pull our stitch marker up here. Now we're on to round 24. In round 24, we're going to be decreasing a uh, down from 42 stitches back down to 36 stitches. 
So to do that, we're going to do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And we're going to repeat that process six times around. So the same as when we were doing it in our off white here, we're just going to start decreasing down now. So that's going to be five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five, and then an invisible decrease into the next. So we're going to do front loop and front loop, and then a single crochet into both of those front loops. And we're going to repeat that process five or six times around. So let's do our second repeat. One, two, three, four, oops, and five, and then our invisible decrease. So front loop, front loop, boom. There's our third repeat. One, two, three, four, and five, and then our invisible decrease. Okay, just a three more. We're halfway through. One, two, three, four, and five, and an invisible decrease. And if you haven't checked it out yet, make sure to, after this uh, pattern, check out more of Sir Pearl Gray's videos um, or patterns. We have a few of them on our Club Crochet site, but he has a bunch more on his own website, uh, including some really cute ducks and a cute little pig. Uh, he makes some really cool Pokemon patterns as well and, and Animal Crossing patterns. You really should check them out. If you if you like this pattern at all, uh, Sir Pearl Gray is an amazing artist, and he makes some really really cool stuff. So go check him out after this after uh, this video. Okay, now we're at our last invisible decrease one and two, and that is going to be the end of round twenty four. We'll put our stitch marker out now up now, and now we're at uh, we should have thirty six stitches around if you want to count your stitches, and you can see how our body's kind of turning out. See, we're going to turn this inside out so that it folds right like that. Okay, but let's go ahead and move on. We are on to round 25. Now for our next three rounds, rounds 25, 26, and 27, so three rounds in a row, we're just going to do single crochets all the way around. So just three rounds of just single crochets all the way around. There should be 36 stitches per round. So just do three rounds of just doing uh, 36 single crochets around. And I'll be back in just a second once I finish these three rounds. Okay, and this is going to be the end of round 27, or three rounds of just single crochets. Now before I continue on, let's go ahead and pull out our stitch markers again. Do it without the needle this time. Let's see if we can do it with just our crochet hook. One. There we go. We're just moving the stitch marker up. Actually, that's probably fine. Let's pull it up from the inside now. There we go. Okay. We don't have too many more rounds to go, but it's nice to have a little bit of extra space for our stitch marker. Okay, so that was the end of round 27. Now we're on to round 28. For round 28, we're going to begin our rounds of decreasing back down to close up our, um, our character here. So what you want to do is we want to start by doing four single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And we're going to repeat that process six times around. So we'll just do four single crochets. One two, three, four, and then our invisible decrease. We're gonna go front loop only, and then front loop only, and then single crochet into both of those. And again, we're repeating that process six times around. So let's do it again. Four single crochets, one, two, three, four, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Let's keep doing it. One, oops, two, three, four, front loop, front loop, single crochet. This is our fourth repeat. One, two, three, four, and then our invisible decrease. So two front loops and single crochet. 
One, two, three, four, and our little front loops there. And then one more repeat. One, two, three, and four. And then our last invisible decrease right here to bring us down from 36 stitches to 30 stitches around, which is what you should have for the end of round 28 here. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up. And now we are on to round uh, 29. For round 29, we're decreasing yet again. We want to do three single crochets this time and then an invisible decrease. So one less single crochet between invisible decreases uh, from the last round. So last round we did four and then an invisible. This round we're doing three and then an invisible decrease. And we're going to repeat that six times around. And this will bring us down from uh, 30 stitches down to 24. So it's three single crochets, one, two, and three. And then our invisible decrease, one, and two, and decrease. And we'll just keep repeating that. One, two, three, and an invisible decrease. One, two, three, invisible decrease. Invisible decrease. One, two, and three, and oop, there we go. Invisible decrease, get a little bit more yarn. One, two, three, and decrease it. Last one, one, two, and three, and then an invisible decrease. And that's gonna be the end of round 29. We'll pull our stitch marker up now. Okay, so before I continue too much further, let's pull our stitch marker out just a little bit. I'm just gonna stuff up the bottom of this just a little bit. You do not wanna stuff it too much. It's, it's a very fragile, um, you just gotta be very careful about the amount of stuffing that you use for this pattern because if you use too much, it'll show uh, through the wool stitches because these stitches are gonna be a little bit open, especially because we're gonna be continuously flipping it inside and outside. So you just want to be very careful with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and use just a small amount of stuffing. And I'm going to try to make sure it's like kind of flattened like that. And then we're just going to place it in and try to get it just to the top of our piece. So we're just going to kind of stuff up right at the top there. We're just going to do that with a little bit more and I'm just doing this now because it's a little easier to stuff it up a little bit now than it will be later. But you have to realize that it is gonna get stuffed up. So I'm leaving kind of a bit of a, of a gap on the inside here. See how it's got like a kind of a hole there on the inside? And that's because I want the stuffing to reach the very top and the outsides here because this is actually gonna be stuffed inside of it. It's gonna be flipped inside out like that. And so you don't want the stuffing to be like too much in the way because if it is, then it'll just all be the stuffing right at the top. And we don't really want that. We want stuffing all the way around it. So we're just gonna do a little tiny bit more stuffing. That's probably fine. Make sure to spread it out. Make sure it's on every side of it. And yeah, I think that's okay right now. We can make the decision if we wanna add more stuffing later on as well. I'm just making sure it's got stuffing all the way. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, and I, I think that's probably going to be enough. But again, we can make we can add stuffing a little later. And you can see how it's, it is it is pretty hollow. But again, we're going to be filling it with stuff. So you want it to be somewhat hollow as you go. Okay, so now we are moving on to round uh, 30. For round 30, we're going to do one less single crochet between invisible decreases, repeating that kind of same process. This time we're going to do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated six times around. So one, two, and then our invisible decrease. One, two, and invisible decrease. And this is gonna bring you down uh, from 24 stitches back down to 18 stitches. So you only have 18 stitches by the end of round uh, 30 here.
to one, two, and invisible decrease. One and two, invisible decrease. Okay, just a few more. You can see how it's getting closed more and more as we get going closer to the end. One, two, and then our invisible decrease here. Okay. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round 30. Pretty quick round. For round 31, we're gonna do one less single crochet between the invisible decreases, so decreasing even further down. So this time we're just gonna do one single crochet and then an invisible decrease repeated six times. So that's gonna be one single crochet and invisible decrease once. Like that, single crochet, invisible decrease, and repeat that all the way around. So single crochet, invisible decrease. There's, that's our second repeat. There's gonna be six of these total. Single crochet, invisible decrease for our third repeat. And again, this should bring you down from 18 to 12 stitches. So you should only have 12 stitches by the end of this round. Just a few more, single crochet, invisible decrease, single crochet, and then one last one right here, invisible decrease. There we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just, uh, we'll leave our stitch marker out. Like we're not gonna work around our stitch marker for this very last round, just because we know where it's gonna be and we're gonna pull our stitch marker out right at the end of it. So for our last round here, we are on round 32. This is gonna be our last round of actually single crocheting. Um, after this, it's gonna be all sewing together and putting everything together. So for our last round of crochet, we're going to do an invisible decrease into each stitch all the way around. So just six invisible decreases total to bring you down from 12 to six. So we want front loop, front loop, invisible decrease. So there's one invisible decrease, six of them total. There's two, three. At the end here, I usually like to pinch it like this to help me get into my stitches. There's four. and five, and then one last one right here, front loop, and front loop, and there's gonna be our sixth one, and that's gonna be our last stitch. We can cut the yarn, you don't need too long of an end, we just need it long enough so that we can sew it closed, and just pull it all the way through. You don't need to do a slip stitch or anything like that. Okay, so let's pull out our stitch marker here, and I might be able to just, yep, Pull it right out like that, that's nice. Okay, so what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this by the front here. We're gonna end up sewing it closed, so we don't need to do all this just yet, but ju this will just help us get an idea of what it's gonna look like. We're just gonna take the front here and we're just gonna stuff it into it, into our piece like this. Try to flatten it a little bit. And it looks like we might want a little bit more stuffing um, but the good thing is it's easy to add stuffing later as long as we don't sew this closed. And that's going to be our little seam right there. And there we go. You can see how it's going to have its shape. And then we're going to flip it inside out like this. And it'll change colors. Okay. So let's go ahead and unstuff it now. Just a second. Because we're going to now want to sew on all of our um, faces and body parts and stuff like that. Okay, so the first thing that we want to sew on, let's go ahead and grab our needle here. We're going to need this for the rest of this pattern is a needle and our scissors. And uh, doo -doo -doo, we might want a little tiny stick. Maybe we can use like something like this just to get all the pieces in the right spot. Okay, the first thing I want to sew on is our tail, uh, because it's a really good way to find out where the very back of your piece is, and I think it's just a good signifier. So the first thing you wanna do is, you should have three ends here if you did our color changes. You wanna start by threading the white end onto your needle, and we're gonna find the very center of the very back. 
So the best way I found to find where I want the back is right in between where the color changes are. So where the color changes here and the color changes here, we want to go right in between, which looks like it probably is going to be like right here. You know, so we just want to be right in the center. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew it. It's got, you should have, um, I believe it's eight stitches or six stitches. Yeah, eight stitches around. Um, so what we want to find is we want to find eight stitches that are in between these two, that are in between these two rounds here. So we want to go like, let's say it's going to be like one, two, one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four. Uh, maybe over here more. So let's go one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That looks like it's going to be pretty good. See how it's we're just going to be working in between two rounds here? It's going to keep it nice and flat. So we want to find in between those two. So let's go one right here. Let's start right there. We're just going to come out a few stitches over wherever you want. You can either go on the right or the left. doesn't really matter. You just want this to keep your piece in place as we sew it together. Now we want to flip it around so that the red stitches are facing the red and the orange are facing the orange. And we're going to start, uh, let's start with our red stitches. And we're going to do thread our red stitch on a needle. And we're gonna find those four stitches that we just counted. So we want four stitches in between. We want, let's go like right here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four over. And then on the top, we're gonna go one, two, three, four over with our orange stitches. So we wanna start with our red ones. And I actually like starting above. So this is gonna be where an orange stitch is actually gonna go, but I like to start there and then go over to where our red stitch is gonna be sewn on like that. And then we're just gonna go around each of our red stitches. So there's one stitch. And then we'll go back in from where we came out and then over one stitch like that. Pull a little tight. And we're gonna go into the next stitch on the red, into where we came out, now through the next stitch over. That's gonna be our second stitch. Here's our third one, in through where we came out, over one stitch over, that's gonna be our third stitch. And then one more here is gonna be the last red stitch right here. We're gonna go in through both loops, in through where we came out, and then we can actually just come out, uh, let's go ahead and come out over here. And the reason is because we're gonna want to use this red end to double knot to this orange end when we get to the orange one. Okay, now with the orange stitch, we wanna thread that onto our needle. And let's start by going over. So we can actually start by going into about right here, and we're gonna come out through where the next stitch over is gonna be, and we're gonna follow this round across back to where we started. And then we're gonna go around our orange stitches, so in through our orange stitch, in through where we came out, and out through the next stitch over. Like that. Okay. If you want, we can stuff, actually, we probably should do that. Let's go ahead and stuff this tail just the tiniest little bit before we sew it together too much more um, because it's gonna be really hard. You know, you can't really stuff it up much more if it's sewn on. So we're just gonna use the smallest amount of stuffing. You do not need much stuffing at all just a little bit and then continue our sewing together. So here's our next stitch in through where we came out, out through the next stitch over, just a couple more. Here's our next stitch in through where we came out and out through where we started with our red and then through our last stitch, which is gonna be right there, in through where we came out and then out through where we came out with our color B, our other tail end, because we're gonna go ahead and double knot these two together. And go pull all these tight. And then all we need to do is double knot these two ends. One. And two. I pulled it pretty tight. You don't really need to pull it as tight as I did. That's pretty good. And then we'll just cut the yarn really nice and close like that, throw it to the side, and just stuff that little knot back into our piece like that. Pull it out a little. And now 
we've got our tail on there. See, and the tail points up, and then when we flip it under, it'll be red. Okay, so we got our tail on there. Next thing we wanna do is sew on the legs. Now we wanna make sure that the legs are equally spaced around, all the way around. And what I really like to do with the legs is sew on both parts so that they're flat. It's like, it's sewn on through one round. And I'll, that'll make sense in just a second. The first thing we wanna do though is make sure that they're all equally spaced around. So let's go ahead and kind of try to calculate this. Let's say we want one leg here and then one leg here, and then we want one leg here and one leg here, right? So let's start by doing, threading the middle of your, of one of your legs. And we're gonna use our tail to kind of signify where we want our stitches. Let's go through this round here, which is going to be just under. It should be equally between the two parts. And let's say, let's go over one, let's see, one, two, three, four, let's go five. And your leg should have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we got eight stitches across, which means we wanna find four stitches. So we got one, two, three, four. Let's go with these four stitches. So we're gonna go right here, which means that our first stitch for one of our legs is gonna be one, two, three, four stitches away from the tail. The reason that's important is because we're gonna do the same thing on this side. So first, find the center right there. We'll just come out through an adjacent stitch. And let's go ahead and just kind of get this one started by going through our first of our four stitches. So we want, I think it was four stitches away. One, wait, one, two, three, four. We're gonna start right there. We're gonna go over one stitch like that, just like that. Okay, that's just gonna get us started. And we can get the next one going as well before we um, fully sew the leg on. So we're gonna just take the center of another one of our legs. And we want this one four stitches away too. So we want one, two, three, four. Make sure it's gonna be where our center is. Okay, and we, I'm, I'm just gonna go one stitch over from that because I'm using the center first. And I'll just come out through an adjacent stitch. That's just important because we need something to double knot to. And then we'll thread our other tail end. Make sure we count it, count our stitches again. So it's gonna be over from the end, one, two, three, four. It's gonna start right here and go over one stitch. Is that right? Let's make sure. From this end it was one, two, three, four. From this end it is, yeah, okay, good. Pull it over one. Okay, so now our legs should be relatively similar in distance. Uh, this one looks a little bit further away, right? Doesn't it? So let's go ahead and move it over one. Make sure that we have it right before we continue over. So. Let's go over one right here, one, two. So I'm moving over one stitch over and doing that again. Onto our needle, pull it through like that. There, that looks a little bit, doesn't that look a little bit more even? Looks a little more even to me. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue sewing this one around first. And all you gotta do is just sew on all of these ends. So you can just go into the next stitch and you can go across to the next stitch over, but I'm just gonna go across and then back across using only four stitches here. So we're gonna go through the next stitch here, in through where you came out, out through the next stitch over. Pull it tighter. And we will wanna stuff these feet up a little bit before we sew it closed too much. So just keep an eye on that. We'll go through the next stitch on the foot. There we go. And then we're gonna go through our next stitch on the body, out through the next stitch over, like that. There we go. So that's gonna be one, two, three, and this will be our fourth. So for our fourth one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through our next stitch here, 
but I'm also gonna go through the next stitch over, so like that, so kind of like across it. And the reason is because we're gonna work back across on the bottom. Like this. Then in through the same stitch. And then we're gonna go out, in through the same stitch, and then out through the next stitch over right here. Like that. Okay, and you can see how it's gonna just work our way back over. Now before I continue, let's go ahead and stuff it, stuff our leg up. Just a little bit. Let's get a little bit more stuffing here. We're just gonna take the stuffing. This actually might be more than enough. We'll just do that little tiny bit. You just barely need to stuff the legs. Like that. There we go. And we'll continue sewing this together. Okay. So we're gonna go in through, let's see, where's the next stitch over? Right here. It looks like we have four stitches, one, two, three, four. And we have one, two, three, four. Oh, that's right, the fourth one's gonna work into two. Okay, so one, two for our next stitch over. this one into the same stitch and then out through the last stitch here and then for the last one we want to go in through both the next stitch and the last stitch so like this simultaneously and then in through where you came out with the needle and then out through where this tail end is coming out so you have something to double knot it to there you go so we got our foot on there, and then we can double knot this together. One, two, cut it nice and close, and use the tail end to just kind of stuff that knot back into the body. There we go. So we got one foot sewn on. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this foot on uh, and try to make it as even as possible. And then we'll go ahead and do our other two front feet. I'll show you where to do that in just a sec. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this leg on. I'll be right back. Okay, so next up we wanna sew on our front legs and uh, we wanna make sure that they are evenly spaced as well. So we wanna just uh, look at the top here and let's count over a few stitches. Um, and the important thing is knowing um, those four stitches that we wanna work into and making sure they're in the same round so that they're evenly distributed on the bottom. So let's go ahead and let's go over, I don't know, five. Let's go one, two, three, four. Uh, and let's say, let's say the first one to go one, two, three, four stitches away. So like right here would be the first one. And then the second one would go right here too. So let's go, I'm gonna put the center of our piece right here. See how that looks. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. Thread on the other foot. And we'll go one, two, three, four. That's where the center, the first one's gonna be. We'll go over a couple of stitches just to have a center stitch to work around like that. Let's see how that looks. That one's gonna be like that. It's gonna be like this. That looks pretty good. Looks pretty even to me. Yeah, because we got one, two, two, two. I think that's pretty good. All right, so now I'm just gonna use these four stitches around, or four stitches in the round to make sure that these legs are sewn on. And again, we wanted one, two, three, we're gonna start right here. We're gonna go over one more stitch. So there's, it's four stitches away from the other, from each foot. So go right there. We're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna sew on the first two stitches as normal. So one into the next stitch, pull it tight, one, and then, oopsie, lost the end. Next stitch here, in, out through the next one. And then in this next one, we wanna go through the next two stitches. So this one, 
and the one over like that to do like a corner and then work our way back through the same stitches on the other side. In through that stitch, out through the next stitch over right here. That, and then we want to just stuff the leg up a little bit before we continue. And then I'll just go ahead and sew on this leg and the next leg the same way. Try to make sure that they're evenly distributed uh, across, and then we can start working on our faces. The faces can be a little bit tricky, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so we've got all of our legs and our tail here sewn on. Actually, this little tail end here, we don't need at all, so we can just cut that and let it loose. And uh, next up, we wanna sew on the muzzle of each side so that they're equally spaced. Now, what is important for the muzzle, let's go ahead and grab it real quick. There's a few things that are important about this. The first thing is that um, I personally like making it so that it is just barely in between the two, uh, the color change rounds. So that the bottom of the muzzle goes right through here, and then the top goes oh, like that. So like, like this. And where this tail end is, is actually the very bottom of the center of your muzzle. So let's go ahead and pull this middle end a little tighter to kind of tighten that center. And we'll thread on this middle one first. Actually, you know what? We can thread on the very center one. Let's place it where we want it to be and make sure that it's just kind of in between. And oh, I forgot to mention, let's count our stitches around and, and kind of like calculate where that's gonna be later. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 9, 10, 11, 12, it's gonna be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So we have 18 stitches to work with here. We're gonna start, let's go ahead and find where we think the center is gonna be. It looks like right there, right in the center of that stitch, could be the center. And we'll just go ahead and pull it down, down to like right here, so we have something to sew it onto. We'll thread our needle thread the very center of the muzzle onto our needle and pull that through. That's just gonna keep it in place as we make sure it fits where we want it to. Okay, let's thread this other end onto our needle. We have 18 stitches we need to find. And we're gonna start by finding the very center of it. Oop, this. And let's go right in between. So we want like right Looks like right there. Let's see, where did I put it? Let's see, let's look at the finished one. Yeah, I did just one round beneath. So that, that's good, I think that'll work. So we're gonna go one round under, and we're gonna go over one stitch, like that. There we go. Okay, so now we know where we want to end, which is gonna be right here. And we wanna find 18 stitches around that we're gonna work into. It might help you to have a, an, a secondary needle here to keep track of like where you want things to go. So let's go ahead and count around. So we got 18 stitches that we wanna work with. And let's say we want uh, the center of the top of it to be like right. Oh, let's find, let's just count our stitches. So we got one, let's say we want one, two, and then we can start working our way up. So three, four, and that would be one, two, three, four would be this stitch. Would go into right here. Okay, let's use this other needle. And then we would want, let's say five, six, and we wanna get to nine if we can, so eight, no, see, that's too far away. So six, let's go seven. You know what, we might wanna go another stitch over then. So one, two, three, four would be right there instead. One, two, three, four would be right. Let's go like that. One, two, three. Wait, one, two, three, four. Okay, so let's do five right here. So instead we're gonna go like this, boom. Let's make sure, one, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four, five, there we go, five. Okay, so that's where we want that one to go. And uh, we can count the other way around too if we wanted to, but let's continue around. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 
seven, eight, and like nine might, we might want to go in the center of this stitch for nine. Let's count backwards now. We got one, which will be that last one. So one, two, wait, one, two, three, four. Let's go right there will be your six. So one, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five. So that would be this one. Would go right there. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So like that. Okay, so we're just kind of trying to calculate where we want everything before we start sewing it together, just to make sure that it's as even as we can be. It looks like we have our top four stitches, one, two, three, four, we want to go across in the same round. So we've got one, and then one, two, three, four, and one, two. So we want one, two, and then, okay, let's just keep Let's just start sewing it together then. Let me grab a needle so that we can keep track of where this stitch is gonna be. I'm, I'm being very careful, much more careful than I normally am. Usually I just kind of like go with the flow, but I thought maybe we'll try to be a little bit more specific this time. Okay, let's go ahead and just start sewing it together and then we will ad lib the center stitches. So one, two, three that. We're just going to continue sewing it across. And don't forget, you will still want to stuff the muzzle slightly as we get further along. Let's see, so it's just going to sew up like that. Come out through this next one. that. Okay. Keep that in place. All right. So next we have, let's see, how many do, stitches do we have to get to this stitch? Because that's where we need to start calculating it again. Let's go ahead and replace it with this thicker needle just to keep it in place. And we need to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight to get to there. So we have eight stitches to work with. So we got one, let's use this one. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, let's do the other way around. One, one, two. Hmm. Yeah, let's start working our way back around then. This stitch into there, out through the next one up right here. Okay. It's just going to be this one there. Go up one more. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, and then six should be that one. So one, two, three, four, five, six? No. One, two, three, four, five, six. We wanted to go all the way over there, huh? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I know, I know, you're just hearing me counting, 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 but I'm just trying to figure out exactly where we want this sewn on. I think this will work. One, two, that we have one, two, three, four to get to that. One, two, wait. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So we might need to stretch it a little. One, two, three, one, two. Yeah, we want to go down to here. There we go, we're on track now. Okay. A few more stitches here. See how our muzzle's gonna get sewn on. 
And I just, I'm just really trying to make sure it's as centered as we can between these bits. Okay. I think we want to go over one more. And then we can go across. We got one, two, three, four, five stitches to get to the end. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. We've got a perfect stitch count now. Done. Like that. Now, before I finish sewing this up, let's go ahead and stuff the muzzle a little bit. Just not very much, just a little. Um, you can use a stick to help this along if you have one. I'm just going to go ahead and get Stuff it up with my finger there. Just a little bit, just so it's got a little bit of poof to it. A little poof to it. All right. I think the next stitch, yeah, it's the next stitch is gonna be this one. And then this to, yeah, there to there. And the next stitch, next stitch over. Just a couple more. Great. All right. And then we're just going to come out through where this other tail end is. And that way we can double knot the two ends together. Let's, let's take a good look at our muzzle. That's pretty good. I, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Okay. One double knot or one knot and then two into the same stitch. And then we cut it nice and close like that. Okay. And that's going to be how to sew on the muzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side uh, so that they're evenly placed here. Let's go ahead close that up a little bit, just so that they're evenly placed ish. And then um, I'll go and we'll add some, uh, I think we need to, yeah, embroider the face onto each of the muzzles after that. So I'll go ahead and sew this one on and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we have our muzzles sewn on. You can see our little muzzle. Boop, boop. Now, the next thing we want to do is make a face on both of these little mouths here. So let's start with our happy face because that's a little bit easier um, or a little bit more fun, I suppose. Now, you want a little bit of black yarn. You don't need much. I like using a little bit of a different kind of black yarn. So I'm going to be using cotton yarn instead of using our worsted weight wool. So that has a little bit of a different texture. Let's we'll thread it onto a needle. And uh, we're gonna start with the happy face. So the way that I like to do our happy face, uh, we can do, you know, you can embroider any kind of face you want here. But what I usually like to start with is the nose. And I like to start by coming out through um, a stitch. Let's go through, let's go through right here. Actually, you know what, let's go through right here. And coming through the side of the center. And what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna go just across a few stitches like to right here and then out through the very center. And the idea here is I'm trying to get like where we want the, the nose to start. So we want the nose to start there. We'll go up a stitch right here and come back down through the center. Okay, so you see how we're just kind of like making a general shape of a nose first. Um, Let's see, I just wanna get a good eye here. You know what, let's go ahead and stuff, I'm gonna stuff the body in for a second just so we can get a general idea of what everything's looking like here. Uh, so our nose is looking a little bit crooked there. I'm glad I did that. Okay. But we're gonna have one go like that and then one go like that and then we're gonna fill in the nose a little bit more. Okay, so let's do that. I'm gonna go, we'll do one. Uh, you know what, let's, let's fill in the nose first. So we'll go over a little bit over here, out through right here. And all I'm basically doing is going across a few times and I'm just kind of embroidering on a nose until we have something, until we have like a basic shape that we really like. Let's do one more.
How's that looking? That's looking pretty cute. Okay, go in and then out through the center. And now we wanna add the smile, as much of a smile as we can get. So let's go, we want it to be like that a little bit. Okay, so we wanna go out, let's go over here and out through the center. I'm just gonna hold it down to give it more of a smiley shape. That's pretty good. And then across, boo. Yeah, we can go, well, is that too close? That's too close. Let's go one, let's go right here. Let's see how that looks. Let's just see how this looks like that. I'm just holding down to kind of keep it into a smile shape. That's not too bad, actually. That's that's pretty great. All right, so I'm just gonna finish up by going in through there, and I'm coming out through our, where our other end is. Just kind of like wiggling on the inside to make sure we're not accidentally attaching to any threads that we don't want to. I'm just gonna pick all these little fuzzies out of the way that got pulled out when we were embroidering it. Pull the smile down a little bit. That's pretty cute. And then we'll just go ahead and double knot these two ends. One. And two. And cut this nice and close. And then use the back of our needle to stuff this knot back into the face. There we go. Okay, so we got a bit of a smile. Now we can uh, sew on our tongue. And this is obviously optional. But let's go ahead and put our tongue right here like that. So he's like, bleh. Or we can do it right in the center. And we'll just thread both of these ends. Go in through a part of the face like right where the mouth is, like right there, and come out through a stitch close to it. Yeah, let's do it right through the center. And we'll go one, we'll go right here. Like that, and out through where the other end is, so we have something to double knot to. Thread it onto our needle. Like that, we'll go ahead Make sure those knots are pulled in. Oh, that's funny. He's got just a little bleh. Okay, just pull it nice and tight. I just really want the tongue to be sewn into the body as, or into it, into the stitches as much as we can. Like I really want to get that knot sewn in there. There we go. And then we'll just double knot these two and cut it close. Go one and two two, cut it pretty close, and then I'll just stuff that knot back into the body. Like that. Okay, let's see how our face is looking. Let's make sure our smile's looking fresh. There we go, he's got his little tongue out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same on the opposite side, flip it inside out, and we're gonna make a uh, like a sad or, or an angry face. So we're gonna go cross and then we're gonna make it go like like an upside down V instead of it being like a, a W, it's gonna be straight down so that way he's like grumpy. So I'll go ahead and embroider that on and then we can continue uh, by working, um, by making the eyes. Okay, so we've got our little frown on there. Next, we want to sew on our eyes. So we want a little bit more of our black yarn. Just clean our workplace a little bit. And uh, let's start, I'll do one of my grumpy eyes first and then we'll do a happy one. So let's start with the grumpy one. The grumpy eyes are pretty easy. We're just basically gonna do like a so uh, I like to come up through a stitch right here and then come out through a close stitch on the body. We can go like right there. Uh, yeah, let's go right here. 
Now, I really like making the the I like embroidering the eyes on, but uh, Philip likes to do uh, likes to do felted eyes. And if you want to learn how to do the felted eyes, check out the written instructions. I have little photos there, and there's an actual template that you can download. You can cut out a felted eye, and then we can glue it on, or you can sew it on. Uh, but I find this embroidery technique is just a little quicker and a little easier for me. And after doing all these parts, uh, I just find it's easiest to just do it this way. That's just my personal opinion, though. You do it however you like to, and let me know your favorite way in the comments. Okay, so first off, I come out through a stitch close to the nose, and then I come out, go through a few stitches over. So let's go one, two, let's do three stitches over like that. And then the eyes are pretty, not, not too tough. You're going to go through one stitch and then come up through the next one over, or next one up, like that. You can see how he's got, it kind of looks like his eyes closed now, which is actually kind of fun. But then we want to go back through where you came out, and then up through... The next stitch across, we're basically going to be doing a, a sharp, like, kind of like an arrow. See, so he's going to get like this grumpy-ish look there. And I'm consistently pulling out little fuzzes that keep coming out of the inside. Then back down through where you started, and then out through the center right here, like that. And there he's got a grumpy face, which is like, angry, angry. So you want to do that on both sides. Um, once you have it in there just like that, you can just double knot these two ends. One and two. Try not to double knot it too tight. I double knot it pretty tight there, which is usually not great, but that's okay. And then we'll just stuff this end right in. And the important thing to do if you're going to make, oh, when you're going to make your second eye is you want it to be equally spaced. So this eye started at one stitch and then you went one, two, three stitches over. And you want to do the same thing on this side. So if we start right here, we want to go one, two, three stitches over. And that's so that the eyes are equally distanced apart. So when you sew the ears on, they are also equally distanced apart. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and sew the other angry on just a second, but let's do a happy one first. So we'll flip it upside down. His little tongue out, that's so silly. Okay, and we want to thread our black yarn again. And the happy, the, the happy face is a little bit different. Um, I like to sometimes add some eyelashes to him too, to make it like a little, I don't know. I just think it's fun. Okay, so we're going to go up, same kind of thing. We're going to come out right here. We're going to start right there, a few stitches under, come out right here. And we're going to do basically a very, very similar thing. You just want a little bit of the end out, pull it back in. We want to go over a few stitches. So one, two, three, and then you want to come up into the middle of it, right in between right there. Okay. And then you want to go around the yarn and back in like that. And I'm going to go ahead and add an eyelash, but you can finish up here and double knot it to that. But let's see how that's going to look real quick. Boop. See, so it makes the eye like do this cute little, cute little face there. Um, but you can add an eyelash by coming out through the end, uh, through the corner of it, and then going up a stitch, down a stitch, and then in through the same stitch right here that and then out through where your end is to double knot. See, and then you got a little tiny eyelash. And that's how I embroider on a little happy face. So I'm going to go ahead and do that same thing over here and do another angry face on the other side as well. And then, uh, yeah, then we can start, we can finish up by sewing on the, um, the ears. Two, double knot it. Okay, so I'll go ahead and embroider on our other eyes, and I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we got a little grumpy face there, and then if you flip it inside out, you got a little happy face. Now, the last thing that we need to sew on is our ears, and our ears are kind of tricky a little bit. The, the tricky part is making sure that they're sewn on in the same spot. So, what I like to do first is take our middle end, thread that onto our needle and uh, count a few stitches over from the eye. So let's go like one, two, 
and then up a few. So like right here, maybe let's line it up. And what you want to do is find where this bottom is. That's going to be the very center, right at the bottom right there. So yeah, let's go like right there. And we'll just come out a few stitches over like that. And you should have, I think it's 18 stitches around for the ear. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Oopsies. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, 18 stitches around for the ear. So what I think is a cool way to do this is um, kind of like how we sew the legs on, all these stitches are sewn into the same nine stitches. So we split it up and we just do nine up, nine back through the same stitches. And this being the center of the bottom. So we wanna start very right in the bottom. You can either go right against where the color change is, or you can go a little up if you want to make it like more of an up ear. But um, yeah, either one really kind of works. And we'll start at the bottom right here, and we're just gonna go up nine stitches, right? So we're just gonna go one, starting here and going up. Let's go ahead and actually just thread our needle and start it. There we go. Like that. And we're just gonna go up, right? So we're gonna go, there's, that's gonna be nine. So we got one, we're just gonna go up nine. So one, two, three. And then once you, you see how I'm kind of angling out, I want to angle back in now. So one, two, three, let's go four, and then angle back in. So five, six, seven, eight. It'll be around right there. And then we'll go back down through the same stitches. We'll start right here. And we're going to just start going, working our way up. Boom. Boom. Out one more like that, and then it'll go back in like that a little bit. This stitch, this stitch, okay. See how it's making just a little bit of a curve in. That's what we want. A few more stitches up, and then we can work our way back down. Let's count our stitches left. So we have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a few more up. Go eight. We're gonna get pretty close to the top. one right here and then when you get to the tip right there we'll go in through the next stitch over and then out through the next stitch over like that so we're doing one of those corners like how we did on the other one and then we're gonna sew on the other side of it through the same stitches down so we're gonna have one two three four five six seven and then finish on eight you can count if you want Let's see so we're gonna go to here so that's Turn there, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we'll finish on eight. Okay. And we'll just keep rocking and rolling all the way back down the ear. And again, the trickiest part of sewing on the ears is just making sure that both ears are sewn on in a somewhat similar way. You can get away with it being like slightly different just because maybe you want your um, your corgi to be curious or maybe you want them to be extra happy so you can have them be like a little off center or something so that he looks inquisitive. So it, it's kind of, the great thing on the ears is it's kind of like your opportunity to make it a little bit different if you want it to be. Let's see how many you got. One, two, three. So this will be one. Yeah, perfect. Two. And then we'll finish up in that last stitch right there. 
Okay, that's gonna be one ear sewn on like that. And then we'll do the other ear here and then I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna sew on all the ears really quick and then show you that uh, the stuffing bit because we, we will probably wanna stuff it just a little bit more. So I'll go ahead and sew on the ears. We'll stuff it a bit more and sew it closed and uh, that'll be the end. So let me go ahead and sew on all the ears and I'll be back in just a sec. Okay, I think that's gonna be the sewing on the ears there, and you can see we got our ears. Now, it actually is relatively stuffed up, but you can see right here in the back, it could use a little bit of stuffing. So let's go ahead and grab just a little bit more stuffing, and we'll stuff up into this little tiny hole right there. In a second. I dropped all my stuffing. There we go. Okay, so we're just gonna take just, just we don't really need that much. And we'll just use this extra stick here and we'll stuff into that hole. We're just gonna fill in any spots that are looking a little bit deflated. And you definitely, again, I, I know I've mentioned this a lot, but you definitely wanna be careful not to stuff it too much. That is super duper important. There we go. There we go. And fill that in. I think we can fill it just a little bit. Let's go ahead and just use half of that to fill in right here a little bit more. And it's easiest to use like a stick for this or your or the back of your crochet hook will work. It'd be of like a rubber crochet hook. That helps a lot too. There we go. Just make sure everything's pretty good there. That's pretty good, I think, though. And the last thing we want to do is just sew it closed. And to sew it closed is pretty easy. We're just going to take this needle on this end here. And we're going to go into the front loops of all the six stitches around here. So just this front loop right here. I'm going to go around through all these front loops. So there's one. There's another. Couple more. Front loops only, and then you can just pull it up, pull or pull it tight. So it'll close that little hole there, and then go back into the center and then out through somewhere on the back. You can find some stitch if you want to to kind of like keep it in place, and then just pull it through nice and tight. And you can just cut the end nice and close. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Truth. Here we go. So here we have our little grumpier face. Oh, he looks so grumpy like you just woke him up from a bad nap. And then you flip it inside out, turn it upside down. And we got a silly corgi. We guess we could. There we go. Oh my gosh, I love the little hair tuft on the on the top. That's one of my favorite parts. All right, well, there you go. Again, if you want to change up the face, you want to add those other things, check out uh, the instructions online. There's a little cut out um, PDF so you can print out um, and cut a, a felt eyes out instead. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Again, if you like this video, please like it down below, subscribe to the channel, check out more of our patterns at clubcrochet.com and make sure to go check out Sir Pearl Gray. You can find him on Instagram. I've got links to all of this stuff in the description. Uh, he's an amazing Amy Grooming artist. And if you do crochet a little guy, a uh, little a little reversible plushie, make sure to tag him in your post. Um, you can find uh, both me and his Instagram information in the description as well. So you can tag us if you want to post a picture. And uh, if you want to check out more reversible plushies, here's going to be my version. Uh, I've got my little frog here. You can see, I love his butt. That's my favorite part about this one. He's got a little butt because he gets grumpy and gets happy. Um, if you want to check out my frog pattern, check it out at clubcrochet.com slash reversible. Uh, it'll be coming out very, very soon. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for crocheting along with me. Uh, pasta la pizza, happy hooking, and I'll see you in the next video. Let's have a corgi survive. Bye. Bye. Wait, are you leaving? You're leaving? <sighs> Don't leave. You can't leave. Did you not like? Uh...